We are going to start the inaugural session. Namaste and a very warm welcome to all. Excellencies, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Energy and Resources Institute, Terry, I welcome you to the World Sustainable Development Summit 2021. We are all virtually in the Pavagada Auditorium, named after the world's largest solar park in Karnataka in South India. As you attend the different sessions of the summit, you move to other venues, you will notice that all our virtual halls in this summit are named after India's major solar and wind facilities. It is a humble celebration of India's efforts to transition to a clean and sustainable future for all. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor and privilege to welcome in this inaugural session of the World Sustainable Development Summit 2021, Sri Narendra Modi, the Honorable Prime Minister of India, His Excellency, Dr. Mohammad Irfan Ali, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Honorable James Marape, Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, Mr. Mohammad Nasheed, Speaker of the People's Majlis, Republic of Maldives, Ms. Amina Mohammed, Deputy Secretary General, United Nations, and Sri Prakash Javdeka, Honorable Union Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Government of India. The theme of this year's summit is redefining our common future, a safe and secure environment for all. The task of redefining our common future and creating a safe environment is challenging, but we know it is possible. The summit series was started in 2001 since then, every year for 20 years, we have gathered the finest minds from the biggest and the smallest countries, from governments, businesses, and civil societies on a common platform and giving them equal stake as stakeholders of planet Earth. In this crucial year, the agenda of the summit is specially designed to link to the ideas and discussions here and to the other global events that will determine our common future, namely the 15th Conference of Parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity, scheduled in May, and the 20th, 25th Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, scheduled in November. A lot has been achieved, but a lot more remains to be done. With this, may I now invite Sri Nitin Desai, Chairman Terry, to kindly deliver his welcome address. Thank you very much, Annapurna. Mananiya Pradhan Mantri Ji, His Excellency Sri Mohammad Irfan Ali, the President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Honorable James Marape, the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, Mohammad Nasi, the Speaker of the People's Majlis in Maldives, former President of Maldives also. And uh, it was Amina Mohammed, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, and Sri Prakash Chaudhikar, the Minister for Environment of the Government of India. It's a pleasure for me and an honor and a privilege to welcome people of such great eminence to the 20th World Sustainable Development Summit. The summit was started 20 years ago by Dr. Rajendra Pachauri, who passed away about a year ago. And I would take this opportunity of dedicating this summit to his sacred memory. Over these 20 years, this summit has brought together uh, people, leaders from around the world, experts, activists. And they came together and exchanged ideas about their vision, their strategy, and specific things that could be done for a sustainable uh, future. It was a mixture of many different things. It's a mixture of basic ideas put forward by our political leaders from around the world, ideas put forward 
new ideas put forward by scientists and engineers, and many other things. But more than that, because we got together in person, there's a lot of networking. And that brought people together, that brought them together at a partnership, and uh, which led to very important initiatives. So this year, of course, we can't do that because we are in the COVID and we are meeting through the internet. But we can certainly do a great deal, push forward the agenda for sustainable development, which started uh, more than 30 years ago in the, in the global process. And uh, Annapurna has outlined some of the major initiatives which are, under, which are likely to take place in the course of this year uh, to advance his agenda on issues of biodiversity and issues of climate change, particularly where the two big uh, conference of parties are likely. But more than that, I think we need to bring the ideas of sustainable development into the way people think about their own lives, the way corporations think about their own activities. And I'm very happy that we are doing this in India because in many ways, uh, our prime minister has taken a lead in this, not just now, but from the time that he was the chief minister of Gujarat when he set up a department of climate change and has been a strong supporter of issues of renewable energy and solar activities. So I'm very happy, Anapurna, that you have named all our sessions of the solar uh, 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 camps that we have. So this, are, this is what we are hoping and expecting, and I'm truly grateful that so many of the leaders around the world have joined us today in this inaugural session. I'm sure all of us are looking forward to the guidance that they will give us on what is it that we ought to be doing. With these few words, Anapuna, let me stop and let us listen to the leaders that we have here with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Desai. Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite Sri Prakash Javadekar, Honorable Union Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, to give his address. Honorable Minister. Ha, okay. Hello. Ha. Sorry for this glitch. Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. President of Republic of Guyana, Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Irfan Ali ji. Then Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, James Marape, Pre People's Republic Maslis, uh, Speaker of Maldives, Dr. Mohammed Nasheed, and Amina Mohammed, Deputy Secretary of United Nations. I am very happy to be here in the Terry World Sustainable Development Summit because this annual event is now internationally recognized and there is good participation and good thought, thoughtful discussions. And this actually creates agenda also for future sustainable conferences. I was just recollecting in 2012, I had participated in Durban UNFCCC climate change conference uh, as a member of parliament. And I saw there India as naysayer a backbencher, not putting up ideas. But in 2015, when we went to Paris under leadership of Narendra Modi ji, we were leading from the front. He brought on the international table for the first time issues of lifestyle, climate justice, and also Indian lifestyle. He explained in great detail, which found place in preamble of Paris Agreement. I presented his wonderful book titled Convenient Action, because the world is talking about inconvenient truth. But the answer is convenient action. And that also I gifted to all the dignitaries in Paris. In the same conference, 
Prime Minister launched International Solar Alliance, Coalition of Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, and Mission Innovation. So these three you know, you know, initiatives have also picked up very well throughout the world. And India is now in a leading position, putting forth its idea. India is implementing its pledges, four international reports. One is United Nations Environment Program Emission Gap Report. Other is Climate Change Action Tracker Report. Third is Climate Change Performance Index. And fourth is Transparency Report. All these four reports say that India under Prime Minister Modi is leading from the front and is uh, doing implementing all its pledges much well before time. So this is India's credibility now and on the international scene, India is regarded as the main player. We have reduced emission intensity. We have increased forest. We have also given new target of restoration of degraded land. And with 90 gigawatts of one uh, renewable, uh, we will definitely uh, achieve Prime Minister target given by Prime Minister of 450 gigawatts. This will give India a leading position. This is our last sentence. This is our country's ethos. This is probably the only country on the world in the world where we worship trees, we worship animals because we love nature. And therefore, with all constraints, our biodiversity is 8% of the world. And we now want to place before the world developing world's demand of promised finance and technological cooperation because that is the way forward. With this, I really compliment once again the Terry for this grand uh, conference. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Prakash Javadekar ji. May I invite Ms. Amina Mohammed, Deputy Secretary General, United Nations, to address us all. Thank you very much, Your Excellency Prime Minister Modi, Your Excellency the President of the Corporate Republic of Guyana, uh, Your Excellency the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates. Following the tragic flash flood in Uttarakhand on Sunday, I first wish to express my sincere condolences to the government and the families and victims and people of India. Climate change is destabilizing our world and the consequences are often terrifying, and my heart goes out to the people of Uttarakhand. We are reminded then of our global imperative to make peace with nature, and so I'm honored to join you all at the World Sustainable Development Summit. Over the years, this event has addressed the most pressing global challenges of our time, calling for collaborative partnerships across and between countries, states, and sectors to redefine our common future. We are at a uniquely challenging moment. We face a global pandemic with less than a decade left to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. And science tells us that we must cut greenhouse gas emissions by 45% by 2030 and reach net zero by 2050. Last year, we saw more than 100 nations commit to net zero emissions by 2050, or in the case of China, before 2060. This momentum is significant. More than 70% of the world economy and 65% of global carbon dioxide emissions are now committed to net zero. But this is not enough. The global coalition for net zero emissions needs to grow to cover the entire G20 countries and more than 90% of the emissions. This is one of the central objectives for the Secretary General and the United Nations this year. At the same time, all commitments to net zero must be underpinned by credible plans with intermediate targets to achieving a just transition. The major emitters in the G20 must lead the way. If consistent with the Paris Agreement goals, their combined short-term actions will bend the temperature curve and open enormous windows of opportunity 
that we need to achieve the SDGs. This is a mighty task, and I know that India will do its fair share. India is currently the only G20 country that will overachieve the objectives of its nationally determined contributions. So much has been done already, as India is seeking greater energy security through a revolution in solar, wind, and energy storage, installing 450 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity by 2030 that will bring more jobs, cleaner air, and a more secure power grid. India's efforts provide a template and a path for others to follow, in particular through the international cooperation that this very institute represents. This year, more than ever, we count on India for its contribution to multilateralism as a force for good on COVID-19 vaccines, on climate action, on peacekeeping. Extreme weather and pathogens are transnational. Our solu solutions to this must also be transnational. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, the COVID-19 pandemic has been a severe setback to global progress on poverty eradication, food security, gender equality, and the other SDGs. But while we mourn the human tragedy of the pandemic, we must also seize the opportunities it offers. First among these is the chance to relaunch and to reshape the global economy. Now is the time to reinforce the environmental imperatives for sustainable economic growth. Now is the time to build a robust, resilient economy that is compatible with our climate goals. Every investment made in the recovery from COVID must be an investment in sustainability. The SDGs must be embedded in the national frameworks and institutions that go beyond specific political parties and administrations. We need to focus on areas that include gender equality and food systems and have the strongest catalytic effect in order to accelerate SDG implementation. Global policies and investments need to shift from grey to green. We must end fossil fuel subsidies and make societies, corporations and communities more resilient to climate shocks. When we see some incremental steps towards sustainable business models, they're still very far from the scope of the scale that is required. We need national governments, regions, cities, businesses, and a civil society to work together towards a common goal of a more just, sustainable, and prosperous world. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, India has been an active, influential player on climate change from the very beginning. Even before the Paris Agreement, India was acting thoughtfully and strategically on its energy, environment, and development priorities. You have translated this strategic thinking into policies and into programs. Prime Minister Modi stood resolutely with the Paris Agreement, launching two major environmental initiatives in the time since, the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure and the International Solar Alliance. India is now poised to lead on the development of technologies that produce low carbon steel and cement, and as co-leaders with Sweden of the leadership group for the industry transition. I look forward to seeing the path that you will chart to get to net zero emissions and a climate resilient economy by mid-century. These efforts have not just national, but regional and global impact. I am confident that India can lead the way. India can count on the full support of the United Nations, our expertise and convening power at the global and country level will hopefully maximize the impact of our partnership. I, I wish you productive deliberations and look forward to your ideas and to the leadership of those around the table today as we strive to meet the SDGs by 2030 and the Paris goals by 2050. I thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amina Mohammed. Thank you. Speaker of the People's Majlis, Republic of Maldives, Mr. Mohammed Najib, we invite you to address us. The Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, President of Guyana, Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, the UN Deputy Secretary General, Indian Minister of Forest and Climate Change, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, everyone. The climate crisis is a grave national security threat to the Maldives, to the Indian Ocean, to South Asia, to the world. Because the world is burning, the largest ice shelf in the Arctic just collapsed. 
A third of Bangladesh was recently underwater. There were so many hurricanes in the Atlantic last year, they ran out of names in the alphabet. But climate vulnerable countries like ours are not prepared to become the first victims of climate change. Instead, we must do everything in our power to keep our heads above water. We harbor no illusion about the dangers. Climate change is already upon us, but that doesn't mean we are going to give up. We plan to survive in a warming world, and we can. But to survive climate change, we must not destroy what's left of nature. In our quest for adaptation, we don't want to concrete over coral reefs or bulldoze mangrove forests, which protects us from storms. We need to wo work with nature, not against it, to restore nature as far as we can. That's why we need soft but smart biological adaptation strategies. We will build sea walls that encourage coral reef growth. We will grow mangroves to protect ourselves from stronger storms. We will use the latest science and cultivate techniques to grow coral that can survive hotter and more acidic seas. Of course, we cannot adapt forever as the world gets hotter and hotter. We must cut emission and must do it fast. We must not allow global carbon CO2 levels to go beyond 450 parts per million and temperatures to shoot past 1.5 degrees. That can still be prevented. The latest paper published by climate scientists show that the world can still meet Paris goal if limit, limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees. However, time is rapidly running out. At current emission rate, there are only 11 years and nine months remaining on the climate clock before all the budget for 1.5 degrees outcome is used. But there is hope. The big emitters, in particular, Europe, the United States, and Japan have presented zero carbon targets and dates. South Africa, South Korea, and Canada have also recently announced net zero targets. In total, 127 countries responsible for 63% of emissions are considering or having or have adopted net zero targets. Now, India, Prime Minister. In December, the Honorable Prime Minister announced an eye-catching target. India will install, it said, 450 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity by 2030. The minister just explained that they have already done 90 gigawatts. This is an extraordinary ambitious goal which shows incredible leadership by the Indian leadership, by the Prime Minister. My office recently made an analysis of the Prime Minister's pledge. Compared with climate targets announced by all other countries, we believe India's new target is the biggest improvement in terms of its climate benefit of any country on Earth. Although South Asian countries did not, and India did not, cause the climate crisis, India can and we can help fix it, and it is, as now demonstrated by Indian leadership. If South Asian countries unite behind a vision of prosperity and low emission, we will lead the world, and we will harness all the advantages of progress that new, clean technologies provide. I'm delighted to have recently started work for the Climate Vulnerable Forum, a group of 48 developing countries that are vulnerable to climate change. Our experts and economists are busy looking into the strategies that India is delivering. Bangladesh government, which is the current CVF president has called these plans climate prosperity plans. 
These plans aim to deliver the economic growth and prosperity that our countries rightfully demand. The plans aim to eliminate poverty and allow least developed countries to reach middle income status by 2040. And they will achieve this with new clean technologies that permit our emission to fall to zero. Instead of clamoring for old colonial machinery of the 19th century, South Asia stands poised to embrace the new technology of the 21st century. Technologies that will help us become rich. Because we don't want eco-austerity, we want eco-prosperity. We in South Asia may be climate vulnerable, but we are not victims. We want to become leaders. This, instead of, I won't cost emission because you haven't, we see now India saying, and with it South Asian countries, I will adopt new te technologies because you will. Instead of the blame game, we have the aim game. So let's aim for high ambition, zero carbon, 1.5 degrees, and save the planet. I thank again Prime Minister Modi for taking the leadership in providing strategies that will deliver a safer and a more prosperous future for all of us. If we want to be the leaders of tomorrow, we have to embrace the new technology. We can't be burdened with the obsolete technologies of the colonial era. And thank you, India. Before I end, Prime Minister, I would like to thank you on, on behalf of the people of the Maldives and everyone for providing us with the COVID vaccine. We are rapidly vaccinating everyone, Prime Minister, and we hope to get everyone vaccinated in two months. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. May I request His Excellency, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, for his address. Your Excellency, Sri Narendra Modi, Prime Minister of India, Excellency, Prime Minister of Papua Guinea, Mr. Mohammed Nasheed, former President of Maldives, Tamina Mohammed, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Prakash Javidkar, Minister of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change of India, Mr. Nitin Desi, Chairman of Terry, Dr. Ajay Mathur, Director General of Terry, distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to be able to join with you today at this inaugural ceremony of the 20th edition of the World Sustainable Development Summit under the theme, Redefining Our Common Future, Safe and Secure Environment for All. <clears throat> At the outset, allow me to commend the Ener Energy and Resource Terry for sustaining this initiative in which the government of Guyana has been participating since 2011. This forum has allowed for Guyana to strengthen its relationship with Terry and the government and people of India. The last occasion Guyana addressed this forum, our then president, Dr. Bharat Jagdev, noted that, and I quote, the time has come for societies to utilize available technology and innovation to use less and achieve more, while at the same time pursuing incentives to align profit to sustainable practice. That message is even more relevant today as we confront the challenges of recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, and we continue to confront global poverty and climate change. Indeed, the time has come for us to redefine our common future, to reform our common values, to address the extant global challenges we face, and to work together to create a better future for our people and planet. Guyana remains committed to its obligation under the Rio Convention and the Paris Agreement. Over the years, we have demonstrated this commitment in our efforts towards protecting the environment, 
conserving biodiversity, tax climate change, and moving the country towards a sustainable development path through our low carbon development strategy. We've been able to protect and maintain forests in an effort to reduce global carbon emissions while deriving payments for forest climate services, which our forests provide to the world. The revenues earned from these services have been invested to enhance growth and promote sustained livelihoods along a low carbon trajectory without impairing natural development. I believe that if we are to turn the tide in the fight against climate change, there must be a recommitment to achieve the targets identified by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and to limit the rise in global temperature to well below two degrees Celsius. All nations, therefore, must accelerate change towards low carbon development path. Technology remains critical to this objective. Many of the technological solutions necessary to increase efficiency and productivity and to reduce our environmental and carbon footprint are already available to us. What is required is great political will to clear of scale development and use of these technologies. In this regard, there's a critical role, not only for governments, but the private sector and organizations such as CERI to help to facilitate technology transfer and uptake. I would like to take this opportunity to commend Prime Minister Modi and the government of India for the many initiatives being undertaken and led by India, in particular, the International Solar Alliance. And I'm pleased to announce that my government has re-engaged CERI to provide technology support in several areas, including renewable energy and key productive sectors, including agriculture. These opportunities need to be upscaled if we are to respond with the urgency and boldness required to address climate change, sustain livelihoods, and protect the environment. COVID-19 has shown us that applying innovative and refashioning our approach is not as difficult as it may seem providing there is a political will at a national and international level. While it is acknowledged that the pandemic is presenting formidable challenge, I'm confident that this is one battle in which the world will prevail. And this should inspire us to overcome the challenges of creating a better life for our people and planet. So in the coming days, as this important region deliberates on the question of redefining our common future, let us also recommit to working together to show that the Paris Agreement has managed to bring us all to the table, develop and developing countries, north, south, and west. While our circumstances are not all the same, we aspire to a shared future in our common home and planet. Let us commit to working as aggressively to secure the future. The twin challenge of the, of the global pandemic and natural disasters has already reversed in many ways the gains of the developing world in achieving the sustainable development goals. India again has provided good global leadership in addressing these issues. For us to achieve the targets of climate change, we need strong leadership, commitment to multilateralism and mobilization of resources championed by responsible leadership. India has demonstrated it is committed to such leadership. And Diana welcomed this commitment. On a personal note, and, and that of the Caribbean community, CARICOM, I would also like to express our gratitude to Prime Minister Modi and the people of India for sharing with our region also uh, 500,000 vaccines, even as you are battling your own circumstances. It is this type of leadership that will bring our world closer together. I thank you sincerely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite you to join me in inviting the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, to deliver the World Sustainable Development Summit inaugural address.
natural mark pop my news next my friend mohammad nasheed speaker of the people's majlis republic of maldives excellency ms amina j mohammad deputy secretary general united nations ms prakash javadekar minister of environment forest climate change government of india distinguished guests namaste i am happy to be speaking at the world sustainable development this forum completes 20 years my congratulations to terry for sustaining this momentum global platforms like this are important for our present and our future friends two things will define how the progress journey of humanity will unfold in the times to come first is the health of our people second the health of our planet both are interlinked there are already many ongoing discussions on improving people's health we have gathered here to talk about the health of the planet the scale of the challenge we face is widely known but conventional approaches cannot solve the problem we face the need of the hour is to think out of the box invest in our youngsters and work towards sustainable development friends the road to fighting climate change is through climate justice at the root of climate justice is the principle of being large hearted climate justice is also about thinking of the bigger and long term picture the sad reality is changes in the environment and natural disasters impact the poor the most climate justice is inspired by a vision of trusteeship where where growth comes with greater compassion to the poorest climate justice also means giving the developing countries enough space to grow when each and every one of us understand our individual and collective duty climate justice will be achieved friends india's intent is supported by concrete action powered by spirited public effort we are on track to exceed our commitment and target from paris we committed to reduce emissions intensity of gdp by 33 to 35% from 2005 level you will be happy to know that a drop of 24% in the emission intensity has already been achieved there was a commitment to achieving about 40% cumulative electric power in all capacity from non fossil fuel based resources and the share of non fossil fuel sources in installed capacity of electricity today has grown to 38% this includes nuclear and hydro large hydro project i am delighted to share 
that we are making steady progress on our commitment to land degradation neutrality renewable energy is picking speed in india we are well on track to setting up 450 gigawatt of renewable energy generating capacity by 2030 here i would like to applaud our private sector and several individuals who are contributing to this india is also increasing usage of ethanol friends sustainable development is incomplete without equitable access in the direction too india has made good progress in march 2019 india achieved nearly 100% electrification this was done through sustainable technologies and innovative model india invested in led bulb long before they became the norm globally through the ujala program 367 million led bulb became a part of people's life this reduced over 38 million tons of carbon dioxide per year the jal jeevan mission had connected over 34 million households with tap connection in just about 18 months through the pm ujwala yojana more than 80 million households below poverty line have access to clean cooking fuel we are working to increase the share of natural gas in india's energy basket from 6% to 15% an estimated investment of 60 billion dollars is is lined up in developing domestic gas infrastructure work is under way to expand city gas distribution network another 100 districts would be added to the ne- network in the next three years through the pm kusum scheme over 30 gigawatts of solar capacity will be developed in the agriculture sector by 2022 friends often discussions on sustainability become too focused on green energy but green energy is only the means the destination we seek is a greener planet our culture deep respect for forest and green cover is translating into outstanding results according to the fao global forest resources assessment 2020 india is among the top 3 countries to have gained in forest areas in the last decade the forest cover in the country has reached almost one fourth of the geographic area conventional thinking may make some people think that when a country pursues development then forest cover goes down but india is one of the countries showing this need not be the case our mission to achieve sustainable development also includes special attention towards animal protection across india people feel proud that over the last 5 to 7 years the population of lions tiger leopard and gangetic river dolphin has grown up friends the gathering brings together the best and brightest minds working on sustainable development i would like to draw attention to two aspects togetherness and innovation sustainable development will only be 
achieved by collective effort. When every individual thinks of national good, when every nation thinks of global good, that is when sustainable development will become a reality. India has made an effort in this direction through the International Solar Alliance. Let us always keep our minds and nations open to best practices from all over. In the same spirit, let us always share our own best practices with others. The second is innovation. There are many startups working on renewable energy, environment, environment friendly technology, and more. As policy makers, we should support as many of this effort. The energy of our youth will certainly lead to outstanding results. Friends, through this forum, I would also like to mention one more area which needs thought. That is the enhancing our disaster management capability. This requires focus on human resources development and technology as part of the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. We are working in this direction. Friends, India is ready to do whatever possible to further sustainable development. Our human-centric approach could be a force multiplier for global good. The support of research of institutions like TERI are important in this effort. I wish this summit and you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Prime Minister. And now, may I request Dr. Ajay Mathur, Director General Terry, to deliver the vote of thanks. Adarni and Manini Pradhan Mantri Mode, distinguished presidents, speakers, Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed, Honorable Minister of Environment, Prakash Javdekar Ji, and my Chairman, Sunitin Desai. First of all, sir, my deepest gratitude to you personally for inaugurating this summit and for reiterating your commitment and leadership to sustainable for many months. I feel proud, sir, in joining both Dr. Nasheed and President Irfan Ali in congratulating you for rolling out the world's largest vaccination drive earlier this year. Sir, under your leadership, India is not only the largest manufacturer of vaccines, but has also undertaken the humanitarian task of donating large doses of vaccine to other countries. This reflects, sir, what you said. Concrete action is more important. It is this which shows a large heart. Sir, it is an honor and privilege to have you to inaugurate the 20th edition of the World Sustainable Sir, this year, of course, as has been noted, we are carrying out this uh, uh, summit through virtual. But our goal remains that we need to get people together. We need to learn from each other's lessons. Sir, we also need to develop new and innovative partners. That, I think, helps us get there. Sir, we are Absolutely delighted that under your leadership, things like the International Solar Alliance and the Coalition for Disaster Resilience Infrastructure have taken off. They are central to us moving forward as the world. We are honored, sir, to have with us also a power packed set of people. I would like to thank His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, for gracing the occasion. Sir, uh, we have a strong heart with shared cultural roots and now with technological change. Your Guyana's low carbon development strategy drives your action and has been critical in combating climate change. Dr. Nasheed, I don't know how to say it. You have been a global leader through ventures such as the Climate Vulnerable Forum and the Climate Smart Resilient Island. 
you have you and Maltese have led on behalf of all these small island states and set a pioneering example of how to adapt to climate is as you said we lead we are not I want to thank Ms. Amina Mohammed, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, for her thoughtful and invigorating remarks. You know, your collective leadership, your our collective abilities, all of us together, our collective promise is what will move us. I'm extremely grateful for your thoughtful. To Pratam Jamdekar Ji, my deepest, he has been a source of great guidance and inspiration to us. And I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you, Honorable Minister, on the actions that you have taken to com combat air pollution in Delhi and neighboring states, and your initiative in developing 200 urban forests across the country. This is much needed. We continue to help and support you in any which way on climate, on air quality, or any other issues that are of importance to the government. I would like to thank various other government ministries, particularly the Ministry of uh, New and Renewable Energy, obviously the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, but also the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy and the Ministry of Earth Sciences, who are our key partners in this fight. Also, many thanks to a host of partner organizations, uh, Tata Clean Tech, Shakti Sustainable Energy, uh, World Bank, Bloomberg Philanthropies, also bilateral countries like the European Union and US. I'm extremely grateful to the UK, who are the hosts of the next uh, climate summit for partnering with us, for being the country partner for the summit and for taking ahead the ideas that we bring here to the summit later this year. Finally, many thanks to the Delhi Government Council including the leadership, Mr. Nitin Desai, and all my colleagues in Delhi who have helped make the summit and provided the material that goes into it. Last but not least, I would like to thank my colleague, Dr. Annapurna Bantwesaran and the team who have brought this together and have kept it going, sir, for 20 years. 20 years ago, sir, your predecessor, the Atal Bihari Vajpayee had started this off. I can't tell you how delighted I am today to thank you for inaugurating them. Namaskar. Very much. Thank you very much. And uh, delegates and participants, we request you to stay on in the auditorium as we move to the high level round table on rebooting green growth Oh, and we shall be joining you very soon in the next five minutes uh, with a new session and with a new set of dignitaries who will be speaking to us on rebooting green growth, uh, which is an important aspect. Thank you, and we see you in the next five I minutes. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Amina Mohammed, President Ifan Ali, uh, and President Nasheed for gracing this. Thank you very much.